T. Part 5. Prelude. Harshorn put on her spectacles and peered over them at the younger man, Wolf. Wolf was sitting on the other side of the desk, with a pile of bound reports splayed out in front of him. To their right, swilling coffee from a dirty paper cup with one hand and drumming his fingers with the other, Romero glanced around the room. It was bare, except for the table, three chairs, and a clock on the wall saying 0642. All right, young wolf, said Harshorn. I don't usually deal with people on your level, but the grand old man on the top floor says I should hear you out. Not even my secretary knows I'm here, so what's it all about? Wolf spoke carefully. Nearly a year ago, we started to notice glitches, discrepancies in the temporal logs, clients being sent to slightly wrong times or places, agents taking an hour to do what should take five minutes, and coming back with gaps in their memories of the trip. There were scan readings that didn't make sense, as though some events had happened twice, or in the wrong order. Little things, sometimes just missing seconds, or effects without causes at the subatomic level. But they got bigger and more frequent. I'm just a supervisor, so I don't understand the technical details. Romero here should be able to explain them. Romero stared off into space, unhurriedly collecting his thoughts and twirling his cup before speaking. Think of time as a long sandy beach, and your life is you walking along one stretch of it. Sounds like a nice life muttered Harshorn. Behind you are your footprints, your past. In front, the future where you haven't walked yet. A giant bird swoops down, picks you up, and puts you down where you've already walked. You walk on for a while, then the bird picks you up again, and you're back where you left off. To someone standing outside the beach, they'll see a line of footprints, with you at the end, and one little area where there's two lines. If you go back to before you were born, there's a fragment of line there. Okay, I can see the Tomor as giant birds, but how does this help us? What happens if the bird takes you back to the same place several times? If you walk on the same bit of sand a dozen times, you don't get a dozen sets of neat footprints. You get a lot of scuffed up sand. That's what we've got. Romero hadn't looked at the other two. Now he picked up his coffee again, still looking into space, having presumably said what he had to say. Yes, said Harshorn. But we can't send people back more than once. Course we can. We're just not allowed. Well, okay. So you're saying someone's found a way to revisit a part of the past more than once. What's the problem? Romero sighed. The problem is, there's a reason we're not allowed. Two lines of footprints, two pasts, two sets of memories. Time can cope with that. It's like reusing your coffee grounds. The second cup isn't as good, but it's still coffee. But go back ten times, and you're not just walking over the same bit of sand. You're wearing through. You're damaging time itself. There's only a thin layer of sand, and you're kicking it away. He had stopped again, and still hadn't looked at the other two. So what's under the sand? Who knows? Maybe nothing, or nothing good. Harshorn peered at Romero over her spectacles. We've got agents we've sent back hundreds of times. And with a half dozen other companies doing it too, there must be hours and years that have visited a thousand times. The number of clients who go back to November 22nd, 1963. Yeah, but we never send the same bit of matter to the same point more than once. If you say so, said Harshorn. But what if I go back today, and next year, some of the matter of my body is part of someone else's body, and they go back to the same place? Does that scuff up the sand? Romero looked directly at Wolf, then Harshorn. It's not just matter, he said. It's got to be consciousness, too. Reality has two layers. Okay, okay, said Harshorn. I get it. 
Well, I don't, but you're saying our company is damaging time somehow, and you're saying we should stop. No. It was Wolf who spoke instead of Romero. No. It's not us doing it. Then it's one of the others. T.I. Chrono Express. Smithson. I don't think so. I had some friends make unofficial inquiries at all the other companies. They all turned up nothing. Hang on. What do you mean, unofficial inquiries? And what do you mean, friends? I went to the board with my suspicions, and they authorized me to approach certain parts of the government's apparatus who would install covert information-gathering devices on their behalf. They even let me do it myself for temporal interlocutors. I posed as a crank to get in. It was fun. There was an awkward silence. Bugs, said Romero. You bugged the companies. Mr. Wolf, said Harshorn slowly. You've just admitted to industrial espionage. And you've accused the board of directors and... The CIA? The NSA? Of being involved. Miss Harshorn, said Wolf. If you look at the matter in its correct perspective, I think you'll find my actions were justified, as well as completely deniable. Harshorn fiddled with her spectacles, playing for time to compose herself. You're telling me there's another company out there, one that's managed to bypass the Tomorrow's restrictions, and they're using time travel in secret and irresponsibly. They're damaging time or something. That's what I'm saying. And it's in the interests of all the companies to find them and stop them. Not just the companies, interjected Romero. The whole world. Yes, well, one thing at a time, said Harshorn. All I've heard so far is vague reports of seconds out of place and disappointed clients. I see no reason to panic just because the timelines got a bit rumpled. I think the company can continue as normal. Then consider what you will do when you try to breathe out air that you haven't breathed in yet. Or when your head jumps to where it was yesterday, but the rest of your body doesn't. Or when your legs suddenly haven't existed for twenty years. The anomalies are getting bigger. Harshorn fiddled with her spectacles again. Thank you, Mr. Wolf, for making your concerns clear. I will speak to the board and recommend further action. Now, if you will excuse me, I have much to do. Something jumped. The three were standing outside of the room, about to go in. Harshorn looked at the men in puzzlement. The clock said 0641. Why are we here? she asked. I don't know, said Wolf. They exchanged glances. Romero spoke. Can anyone remember how we got here? 